Welcome to 21 Portman Place, the headquarters of the Association of Anaesthetists of Great Britain and Ireland, AAGBI. I'm here today with Professor Mike Wee from Poole Hospital Foundation NHS Trust and Dr David Thomas from Morrison Hospital. They're the co-chairman of the most recent Association Gu Patient Safety Guideline Intraoperative Cell Salvage. Gentlemen, hello. 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 Professor Wee, what is intraoperative cell salvage? Uh, intraoperative cell salvage is the use of really the blood that is spilled by the patient during surgery, um, cleaning it up and giving it back to the patient. Oh, and what would happen to that blood otherwise? Otherwise, in normal surgery, it would be lost, and that is really a waste stage. Okay. And what's wrong with actually just giving people blood transfusions? I mean, they're incredibly safe these days. Well. Uh, in the developed world, you're probably right in terms of risk of infections, but there is a cost to everything else, and a unit of blood is quite expensive. It's been artificially kept low in the United Kingdom for about £140, but the real cost is a lot more than that. And if you compare that with intraoperative cell salvage, where you can use the patient's own blood, again, uh, it's been shown that you know, uh, a unit of blood, if you collect 250 mils, 300 mils, you would offset the cost of uh, the blood is given. But apart from that, giving a donor blood or allogenic blood um, is not very good for the patient because you can give the wrong blood, which is a problem you see up and down the country. And also, um, blood in itself can cause uh, immunological reactions to the patient in terms of uh, maybe suppressing the uh, ability to fight infections, for example. So, Dr. Thomas, it's sounds like it's much better to give the patient their own blood back than to give them somebody else's. It, it's certainly better to have your own blood back if it can be collected safely and, and, and cleanly. And, and how easy is it to do that? Very, very simple. You substitute the normal surgical sucker for an aspiration set that goes into a, a specific cell salvage uh, reservoir, and that can be processed with a fully automated machine, uh, producing a, a unit of the patient's own red cells within about 12 minutes. 12 minutes, mm -hmm. that's pretty quick. Um, so what sort of operations could this technique be used for? Well, traditionally it's been used in high blood volume uh, loss types of procedures. We, we talk about cardiac surgery, vascular surgery, um, liver and kidney transplants, mm -hmm. anything that's likely to bleed. And are there any operations that you couldn't use it for? Well, there are cautionary areas which uh, the, the commercial firms selling these devices warn about its use and that's mainly in the presence of cancer um, when there's obstetric uh, cases delivery of, of, of the baby and contamination with fetal contaminations uh, and uh, when there's gross infection in the wound that makes it unsafe. So what would be the concerns about using intraoperative cell salvage during a cancer operation? Well there is a theoretical possibility that the cells uh, which are collected in blood and are cancerous may lead to a spread of that disease and clearly the reason for the surgery is trying to eliminate uh, the cancer. So it's the spread of disease people are concerned about um, but again there are advocates saying that uh, circulating cancer cells are already present in, in many people at the time of operation. Um, so it, it remains an area of debate but a cautionary area of use. And there are problems with giving um, allergenic or transfused blood to cancer patients, are there not? Indeed, it can. Uh, one of uh, the main problems with giving blood these days because it is incredibly well tested and uh, many of the transfusionists from the blood transfusion services will remind you of how safe it is now because of viral testing. But you still get an immune reaction from any transplanted organ and blood is a transplanted organ which tends to uh, suppress the immune response in the recipient. And so the potential is that with that suppression, you may be encouraging spread of the cancer. So um, another pot potential benefit from giving the patient their own blood back. Um, now, there are other groups that have issues um, in terms of receiving blood and blood products, and I'm thinking here of uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. um, how acceptable Je to Jehovah's Witness patients is the use of intraoperative cell salvage? Well, many of them will accept uh, the, the cell salvaged blood uh, back. Usually it needs to remain in continuity with their circulation, and that can be achieved very well uh, by uh, putting a, a, a giving set 
to the collection reservoir and connecting that up before you start. And so theoretically it is possible to keep it in continuity with the person. Uh, but it is individual choice and uh, they don't force uh, their members to accept or not accept that, but they do find cell salvage more acceptable. In fact, over the years, um, they've raised funds to purchase these machines for hard-pressed hospitals. Uh, and is this technique widely known amongst uh, Jehovah's Witness oh, uh, indeed, communities? Yes, yes. They're, they're very, very well aware of it. Dr Thomas, is this technique available in every hospital? Currently it's not available in all UK hospitals. A, a recent survey by the UK Cell Salvage Action Group showed it was only available in about 55% of hospitals. Uh, and in my opinion, there are areas of development where it should be used, and there are certainly hospitals that uh, have not yet addressed a, a decent service. So, Dr Thomas, if you were going into hospital to have surgery, would you want this technique to be available for you? An unqualified yes. I would want it to be used uh, on my family, on myself. Uh, I see it as a, a, a very advantageous technique to receive. And why isn't cell salvage available everywhere? Is it, is it a matter of cost? Cost is one factor because there are what we call disposable costs and there's also the cell salvage machines themselves, which is a cost. Uh, Dr Thomas has already said that um, you know, um, the Jehovah's Witnesses have who have promoted cell salvage have sometimes supplied hospitals with some of these machines. But it's not only that, it's the organisation that's important. We need to have a lead in cell salvage, you need to have a champion really in the hospital to say uh, for certain operations where blood loss is, uh, is anticipated or other reasons for conserving blood, then it's important, uh, it's important for this to be um, advertised in the hospital and also to promote it. And then there is also the management side of it because you need training, you need competencies because it is another skill that needs to be brought into the operative setting. You told me a lot of good things about this technique, but does it have a downside? Can it ever be dangerous? Well, everything has a risk I in life uh, and what you certainly need for these machines is trained and competent operators, which is part of the purpose of this, this safety guideline really is to promote that training and availability of competent operators. Professor Wee, who should read this patient safety guideline? Well, the members of the Association of Anesthetists should read this, but it is also endorsed by the surgeons, and they are our colleagues in the NHS, they should read them. But the really, all those interested in uh, care for the patients, during the operations, the ODPs, the managers should read them as well because it is a team effort at the end of the day. Uh, the guidelines promote safety, promotes preservation of blood and also improves uh, cost effectiveness of use of blood within the NHS. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. We've heard from Professor Wee and Dr Thomas that this Association of Anaesthetists Patient Safety Guideline encourages the increased use of intraoperative cell salvage throughout the NHS. We've heard it has real benefits for patients and patient safety and cost savings for the NHS. This guideline has been endorsed by many of the leading organisations involved in patient care, particularly those patients having surgery. It's available for free download from the Association of Anaesthetists website www.aagbi.org. Thank you.